to your foot. Oh, poor thing, twisted her ankle, chasing a single man up a tree. I tripped over the kitty litter box. Dear, if I were you, I would stick with my story. Look at all these bags. You been out shopping at Big Bad and Unbearable? Mother started cashmere sweater she liked for me and got one in every color. I even got one for Quincy, the new guy I'm dating. That was for him? I thought that was for me. Dad, please, it was a large. They were having this great special. If you buy 20 sweaters, you get one free. Oh, my mom gets the same deal, only instead of cashmere, it's toilet paper. Well, I think it's a waste buying so much of one thing. Unless it's something you need, like comfy cotton underwear. Ooh, just had a flashback to our wedding night. <laughs> self-esteem is into the building. Great. Now even the deli guy is slipping me demo CDs. Uh, that's your boy. Mona, I love to make music. Take me away from my hands out of hell. <laughs> Can you believe this? Before the talent searches happen occasionally, but now demos don't just come in the mail, they come in my lunch. Speaking of lunch, can I borrow some money to buy some? I'm taking Hillary and accounting out to the taco hut, and I don't want to look cheap. <laughs> You know, Spence, you already owe me $600. I can't believe you're keeping track. You know, I don't keep track of the money you borrow from me. When have I ever borrowed from you? I don't know. I don't keep track. <laughs> Pull harder. Harder. Come on, put some muscle into it. <laughs> okay, now I can't feel my legs. <laughs> You are really going all out for your date with Quincy. Well, Quincy is the perfect relationship after Carter. It's light and easy, and he even plays the guitar in bed. Is he any good? Oh, is he? Is he any good at guitar? <laughs> I can't hear when his shirt is off. He's sexy and ambitious, and not only that, he's a political advisor to the mayor. I'm finally going to get a chance to sit at table one at the black and white ball. I can't wait to see Daddy's face when I'm waving at him all the way back at table 32. Oh, it'll be just like the face he made when he found your mom drag racing the Aston Martin. <gasps> so what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm hanging out with my good friend, Mr. Tebow. Oh, Mona, that's just sad. Hey, I didn't break from people. Ever since I got this promotion, everybody wants something from me. If it's not a waiter trying to stick a demo CD into my pad thai, then it's Spencer hitting me up for money. Mona, you have been complaining about this forever. Your problem is you never set boundaries with people. You have to learn to say no. I say no all the time. Last week I told the waiter, no anchovies in my salad. <laughs> and when he put anchovies in your salad, what did you do? Picked him out and hit him in my broccoli, which I also told him I didn't want. <laughs> See what I mean? Listen, it's hard to do, especially when you're dealing with someone you're close to, like Spencer. But if you have the good relationship you think you have, he'll hear you when you set him straight. How come I never thought of it like that? Because if you did, you'd put me out of a job. <laughs> Quincy, hey. hi. Mm. This is my sister, Mona. Oh, nice to meet you, Mona. Hi. Come on in. Like that. Hey, Mr. Tebow's nice, but it doesn't look like that. <laughs> Welcome to Le Faire des Feet. Oh, don't waste your time. I just want to know how much those shoes in the window are. Oh, it's only my second day, so I'll have to check. I'll be right back, Mrs. Thorne. The Mrs. Thorne? That's what my driver's license says. 
along with the fake weight I put on it. Oh. You're the reason I got this job. After you bought the Gucci slingbacks in every color, your sales girl took her commission and bought a house in Fiji. Oh, you think I'm here to shop? And I am. I like to buy lots of shoes to compensate for my empty life. Please, take a seat in our massage chair. It will need your cares away so you can concentrate on the important things in life. Shoes and purses. Ladies, please indulge our special customer. My name is Sasha, and I'll be right back with that prize, Mrs. Uh, Thorne. Whatever, baby. Take your time. <laughs> oh. plan to attract a better class of females. Hmm, new jacket and Tim's. I guess that means you have the money to pay me back. I've had this bad boy on layaway for months. And the sales girl said the leather brings out the baby brown in my eyes. <laughs> and you fell for that? A little bit. Spencer, I want the money back that you owe me, all of it. You serious? Hell yes, I'm serious. And from now on, money that's loaned is paid back. But I don't have it. I spent it on this sexy new look. Well, then say goodbye, because I'm repossessing the sexy and the new. <laughs> Shoes. Good thing I left the leather drawers at home. This gown is perfect for the black and white ball. That is beautiful, baby. It combines the classiness of Halle Berry with the bold sexiness of J-Lo between her second and third marriage when she was at an all-time fashion high. <laughs> Stayed up all night writing a special song for you, Didi. It's called Special Song for You, Didi. Aww. No one has ever written a song for me before. Except for the crazy guy who lives in our dumpster. But I'm not sure it was only for me, really. It was called Earthlings Prepare for the Onslaught. <laughs> You're really lost in my azure blue soul? My dream is to be a songwriter, but I... Keep getting rejections from music companies. I just don't have any connections. Wait a minute. Doesn't your sister work for a record label? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, I couldn't. Oh, sure you could. Why don't I pass your demo along to her? Really? You do that for me? Of course I would. It's nothing. Well, it's everything to me. Oh. Ooh, that'd make a good song title. I'm writing that down. <laughs> are delicious, just like my maids make it home. <laughs> Wait till you see what else we have in store. Straight from the runway, cobbled together from Costa Rican virgin cows, and we only have them left in one size. Yours! <laughs> So true. You look ten pounds thinner. I'll take them. I, I mean, I deserve them. After all, it's not easy running a mansion and taking care of my midget husband and dog, Coco. Oh, and the baby. Oh, no need for that. We'll just charge them to the Thorn account. Huh? Oh, right. The Thorn account. I love my Thorn account. I also love these crab pups. Could you stick a couple in the bag with the shoes and I'll be on my way? And don't forget the dipping sauce. go out to lunch because I don't have any shoes. You can't go to lunch because you don't have any money. Hey, Spencer. Mm. Aw, look at your cute little socks. Women. Always chipping away at a brother's soul. Bye. Hey, Mona. I brought you Quincy's demo CD. I need you to give him some feedback. Right. Gotcha. No. What do you mean, no? Well, remember your pep talk about drawing boundaries? I am drawing them all over town. I sent my burger back because I ordered chicken. I made the dry cleaner honor my expired coupons. And when Ma invited herself over for dinner at 7, I told her no. I stood my ground. Now she's coming over at 7.15. <laughs> so thank you. 
thanks for the advice. You're welcome. But you know what's just as powerful as saying no? Saying yes. So here you go. Oh, I got it. You're testing me to see if I'll stick with it. No, I'm not. Now here you go. You know, I have to say, I'm very impressed. You brought props and everything, but I am more impressed with me because I'm not falling for it. Mona, I'm not kidding. I promise Quincy, and I never break a promise I make to a man who's taking me to the black and white ball. So just listen to this demo. It'll take you five minutes. It'll take me no minutes because I'm not doing it, and I can't believe that you would seriously ask me. And I can't believe that you would seriously deny your sister. My sister told me to say no when I thought people were taking advantage of me, so I'm doing that. So you can take your CD and go. This is a very unpleasant side of you. <laughs> Rejection letter from a record company, a form letter, no less. It wasn't even signed, baby. Quincy, I hate to see you like this. Just remember how talented you are. You're so supportive, Dee Dee. Maybe this will inspire me to write a new song. Oh. I got nothing. <laughs> I hope you don't mind if we skip the black and white ball. I just need to be alone with my pain. Really? Because I read that what's best for depression is to be around a lot of people, preferably in formal wear while drinking champagne. Well, I don't want Arnold and Maria to see me like this, just cloaked in defeat. Arnold and Maria at table one? Um, Quincy, you know, I was planning to give you the great news at the ball, but why not share it now? Mona listened to your demo and really loved it. She did? Really? Would I lie to you? <laughs> hey, Mona! Uh, Mona has boundaries now and doesn't want to be disturbed. Mona, thanks for listening to my CD. I can't wait to come to the delicious. Quincy! Uh, I never wanted you more. Upstairs, quick! Dee, I told her I wasn't going to listen to Quincy's CD. That's not what you said. Okay, fine. That's exactly what you said. You said she listened to it and loved it. That's not what I said. Okay, fine, that's exactly what I said. Well, if you can't even get your own sister to listen to my demo, I don't see a future to this relationship. So you were just using me to further your own agenda? That is beneath contempt. That's what you were doing to him to get to the black and white ball. That is not what I was doing. Okay, fine, that's exactly what I was doing. Using me? You were using me. You used me first. Suddenly you're not as attractive. <laughs> you're done, dude. unless she's properly attired. I'm so sorry, Daddy. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. Although if it's for my platinum card, that thing's long gone. I've barely seen it since the day I said I do. <laughs> Let me get your take on something. People always seem to want things from you. So what do you do when you set boundaries and then people don't like you for it? Sweetheart, it's tough at first. But once you establish a pattern... People will respect you. I wish I'd set boundaries when I met Dee. Now she's shopping in the Pacific for his and her islands. Thanks, Dad. That's what I needed to hear. Hey, do you want to come in for something to drink? I've got you who. My girl. <laughs> would she be? <laughs> Mona, now here's a rare example of someone who doesn't want something from me. I want you to move over. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> 
Phyllis, I'm serious. You're the only person in my life who has never taken a thing from me. And that's the thing I'm most proud of. Hey! Oh, that and Mona. That's a nice shoe. I was just telling Dee, you could have nice things on a budget. Yeah, Ma, that shoe is beautiful. Where did you get, get it? You know, I have had enough of the compliments and the questions. Can't a woman just visit a daughter without being constantly talked to? I can't believe Mona. After everything I've done for her, constantly helping her with those ashy elbows and that untamed hair. Well, I wouldn't stop doing that, dear. The poor girl is five cats and one polyester calf damn from turning into her mother. <laughs> and you did tell Mona to stop letting people use her. I know I said that, but it didn't apply to me. Sisters are supposed to do anything for each other. Dee, as much as we like to blame others, as is our tradition. Mona hasn't done anything wrong. Let me tell you a story. The time, 1974. The place, Betty's Bargain Barn. Mother wasn't always rich, you know. It was a time that I... I do been... have class in half an hour. <laughs> Anywho, my sister Vivian found the most stunning halter top in chartreuse. And you know how mother's skin glows in chartreuse. And I asked Vivian if I could have it. And she said no. Now, I could have begged, badgered, pulled the fire alarm and ran off with it. But I didn't. Because I respected that Vivian said no. She looked fat in chartreuse and I knew it. But still, I respected her boundaries. And you need to do the same with Mona. You know, Mom, your story really helps. Now realize, my advice only pertains to sisters. If your father tells me no, I'm shopping for matching minks for me and Coco. Well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> the time, last Friday. Oh. The place... <laughs> There's my favorite customer. Let's get you right into our special chair. Oh, we even have toast points with Beluga. Your favorite. Actually, I'm here to return these shoes. Truth is, my half-pint husband thought they made too much noise on the mansion floors. <laughs> I'll take care of everything. Thanks. Phyllis? <laughs> What are you doing here? Surely you haven't mistaken this luxurious shoe store for the all-you-can-eat waffle buffet. <laughs> See? Now you put me in the mood for waffles. Bye! Oh, 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 son, I found something that won't make any noise on your mansion floors. <laughs> mansion floors? She does not have If you'll excuse floors. me, I'm with a very important customer. This customer has never purchased a pair of shoes that weren't rubber on sale or didn't come with a free pair of socks. <laughs> Mayor, if you please wait your turn. Young lady? I don't think you know who you are talking to. If I hadn't just taken my afternoon Percocet, I'd have your job. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Before things get ugly, mm. the truth is, since we are both Mrs. Thorne, Sasha mistook me for you, and I just went along with it. Don't you know the difference between Burberry and trench coat of undetermined fabric and origin? <laughs> I'm new. <laughs> and you have some serious kissing up to do. I like to see the new Manolos in every color and style. Right away, Mrs. Thorne. <laughs> so I got a little carried away. I never spent that much money on my feet before. Oh, poor desperate Phyllis. <laughs> I understand why you did what you did. <laughs> Security! <laughs> Security! <laughs> brought you a gift. Oh, smelly candle and a beautiful... All right, what do you want? I talked to my mom, and after sitting through a fascinating tale about discount shopping, I realized that I was wrong to try to force Quincy's demo on you. I'm sorry. Thanks, Dee Dee. I want you to have boundaries with people, and I guess that means me too. Well, I think I got so pumped about standing up for myself that I might have overdone it. But I don't want to be that way with my sister. Eh, you're new at this. The important thing is you took my advice and it'll have a positive effect on your life. Yeah, wait, did you just compliment yourself? <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, fine, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Here you go. All 600 bucks I owe you. Thank you for respecting our friendship and my need to count the money because I can't believe you're paying me back. 
Well, it's all there. See, I got small amounts from a lot of people instead of a big amount from one person. That way no one misses it that much. I borrowed from Junebug, Maceo, Chauncey, and this girl at the club. That explains all the greasy singles. <laughs> and this one has a phone number on it. Ooh, I'm gonna need that one back. <laughs> Ooh, I'm about to hit it! I love to share. 
<laughs> Go on, Olivia. Well, I told these two I only had $100 left on my card. But someone decided he wanted the 32-ounce steak, the twice-baked potatoes, the mashed potatoes, and the potatoes au gratin. <laughs> I canceled the steak fries. <laughs> Back in the day, I was a little husky. <laughs> More like Husky's distant cousin, John Normus. <laughs> anyway, well, we explained the situation to the manager, who was so rude. So we decided to do a hug and jog and crawl out the window of the ladies' room. <laughs> the only problem was after Olivia and I got out the window, twice baked potato over here got stopped. <laughs> it was a very small window. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at my pain? No. We're just laughing at your chubby little legs flailing over a toilet. <laughs> oh, don't be so sensitive, Spencer. I mean, that's all in the past. Look at you. Oh, buff and tender. Just looking kind of tasty these days. You're, uh... Well said. <laughs> I'm so glad I invited myself to your mini reunion. There's so much about Mona I never knew. And I never even knew you existed, so we're both learning. How long are you in town? Just until tomorrow. So, Mona, if you're hiding any other siblings, you better call them up now. Hell, I didn't even call this one. She's just got the nose of a bloodhound. <laughs> saying is that if you didn't use a glitter pen to take messages, then maybe I could read them. Right. That's what you think you're saying. What I'm hearing is, Adam, stay in your box. Hey, Adam. Man, he's been cranky ever since they took away his men of soul food screensaver. Wasn't it great seeing Olivia last night? So what'd you do after you dropped her off? You know, a little this, a little that. Oh, here's another message I forgot to. Did you have sex? <laughs> How'd you know that? I didn't. I say that to everyone. You get the best dirt that way. <laughs> Wait a minute. You slept with someone and didn't tell me? I think you left out something between a little of this and a little of that. So, who was she? Mm, Olivia. Oh. <laughs> Olivia? Oh, straight sex. Ugh, there's enough of that on TV. <laughs> gentlemen don't make me paint a picture okay i will <laughs> after i took her back to the hotel she invited me up and let's just no, no, say no, don't say it. oh too late now i have naked images in my head <laughs> i can't believe you two hooked up why is it so hard to believe she hasn't dated much since she moved to new york and she responded to a familiar face and a splash of pocket rabon <laughs> but olivia's a friend and friends don't do friends Except, of course, on friends. <laughs> they do now. And after Olivia told me how tasty I look, I realized I wanted the one thing I didn't have in college. Pants that did make noise when your thighs rubbed together? <laughs> no, sex with someone who didn't just feel sorry for me. Last night was the culmination of a chunky boy's dream. <laughs> okay, on some twisted psychological plane, I get it. It's kind of like me wanting to get revenge on all the popular kids in high school by unleashing my telekinetic powers at a pep rally. You need to find a dream you can achieve. Hey, Mona, I brought you... What are you doing with my nightstand? Hey, once it's on the street, it belongs to whoever finds it. And after I pried that wino's hands off it, it was mine. <laughs> Hey, don't look at me like that. Them's the rules. So, what's your plan? Oh, I'm going to sand it down so I can see it in its natural state. You know, probably don't know this about me, but I'm quite crafty. Ooh, I love learning new things about my sister. Like meeting your friend Olivia last night. Oh, you mean Spencer's latest sexual conquest? Spencer and Olivia slept together? Wow. She seemed like she had better taste than that. <laughs> The point is, there's some lines you just don't cross. Look, Spencer's a guy, and guys want to do guy things, which are girls. <laughs> but Spencer totally took advantage of Olivia's dating trap. Men are such whores. You sound like you're jealous or something. Jealous? About Spencer? You're looking a little green, and I don't think it's the cheap jewelry. <laughs> Please, I could have had Spencer. I almost did. What? When? And why am I just hearing about this? <laughs> we were in college, we were drunk, we were bored. But when skin hit skin, we sobered up quick, thank God. 
Wow. I thought you had better taste than that. <laughs> the point is, no good can come from friend sex. I don't know, Mona. I remember one time my friend Donovan and I slept together. It was romantic, it was passionate, and completely fulfilling. And it didn't change things? Of course not. Although, come to think of it, I haven't heard from him since. <laughs> Men are whores! <laughs> cannot believe you are always letting another woman beat you to the punch with Spencer, Delilah, Geneva, Olivia. When is it going to be Mona? Ma, this is the last time I'm telling you for the last time. Spencer and I are just friends. And isn't friendship the most valuable relationship you can have? Honey, friendship ain't going to give me no grandbabies. <laughs> Did you want it to look like that? No, I'm not done. I, I want it to look distressed. Oh, then you should have stopped an hour ago. Ma, just saying. Took you two weeks to do what I could have done in ten minutes with a martini and a sledgehammer. Hi, ladies. Mom, I just happened by an art store, so I picked up a few things in case what you're doing to the nightstand doesn't work out. What makes you think it's not going to work out? Looking at it, mostly. <laughs> It'll look great once I buff it out. No, it won't. Come on, all I want you to do is listen to my ideas. No, I really don't want Okay, any... first we sand it down to get rid of everything you did. Then we whitewash it. Oh. Then we replace the wooden knob with an antique silver rose one. Ooh. <laughs> then we put pink and white mosaic tiles on top. Oh. Ma, could you stop with the ooh-ahs? I don't mean to hurt your feelings, baby, but that's damn ugly. Even the wino wouldn't fight you for it now. Don't leave her alone with the glue gun. Thanks, Ma. Okay, Dee Dee, if you think you can do better than me, give it your best shot. Okay. Hey. Hey. Mona, I gotta talk to you. I gotta talk now. I just heard from Olivia. Well, glad you have. I haven't heard from her in weeks. She's probably too embarrassed to call me. You know, I hope fulfilling your chubby fantasy was worth it. Well, the fantasy has turned into a nightmare. <sighs> Olivia thinks she's pregnant. Olivia's pregnant? It's kind of looking that way. Olivia took one of those home pregnancy tests, and now she's just waiting for the doctor to confirm. Wow. I know. I'm not ready for fatherhood. You're barely ready for adulthood. <laughs> okay, people, let's not freak out. I mean, maybe Olivia's just late. It's pretty hard to get pregnant when you use protection. Spencer, you did use protection. Only if you're talking about deodorant. <laughs> You had sex without a condom? That is possibly the stupidest thing you've ever done. And that's counting the time you tried to shave your eyebrows with my apple lady. How could you not put a jacket on your butler? Well, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes? Why not just flip a coin? Hey, everything was happening so fast. Well, not everything. Spencer, there's a convenience store on every corner. They may smell like nachos and feet, but if it keeps somebody from getting pregnant or catching something, then you pull the door open with a handkerchief, hold your nose, and you go on in, damn it! Well, at least someone gets how serious this is. I know how serious this is. Right! Now that you may be having a baby, how about thinking about that before you did the deed? Or how about just thinking? Good. If this wasn't my apartment, that would have been a lot more effective. <laughs> so mad at Spencer and Olivia. And if she ever returns my call, I'm a teller. And you know what I'm going to tell you? I'll tell you what I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her she should have had some condoms her damn self. A girl having her own? That's just tacky. I have a stash. They're a little dusty, but I got them. And I can't believe you don't supply your own. Well, I like champagne and flowers, but I don't supply those for myself either. Are you like sister from another century or something? No, I just happen to care what a guy thinks of me, and having your own makes you look easy. <laughs> so what do you do for protection? Well, if he doesn't bring his own, I make him stop, put his clothes on, get in the car and go get some. And then if I like him, I let him back in. 
Talk about a mood killer. Not if you're me and you're naked when you answer the door. I can't believe you care so much about some guy's perception. Yeah, Dee Dee, some things are more important than image. Bite your tongue. Image is everything. You take that filth to the street where it belongs. Now, Dee, we have got to get to Saks. They have a big sale tomorrow, which means if we don't go now, we're going to have to fight all the tourists in their too tight sweatsuits. Actually, Mona and I are in the middle of an important conversation. Oh, you're welcome to join in. It's about sex. I think we should start with belts and hats and work our way up to shoes. It's okay, Mom. Mona's just kidding. Look, I think we're past the point of pretending in front of our parents that we don't have sex. <laughs> no, no, we're not. <laughs> I just think that Spencer's being so reckless. Just because nothing's happened to him so far doesn't mean that nothing can. And don't even get me started on Dee Dee. I don't know, Ma. Maybe I'm just being a nag. Yeah. I don't know where you get that from. <laughs> but you're also being a good friend. And you've been this way since you were a little girl. I think it started with the Pop Rock incident. Do you remember little Annie Pete? Hey, I'm going to fill my whole mouth with Pop Rocks and wash it down with great soda. It's really cool. Everyone's doing it. That sounds really dangerous. Are you going to tell her? not my problem. I'm not going to tell her. Somebody should tell her. <laughs> I think she knows. Ow! Ooh, that's going to leave a mark. <laughs> and has any waved to me from the ambulance? <laughs> I swore that I would always speak up if somebody was making a mistake. As you should. But honey, once you've told them, you've got to back off and let them find their own way. Even Spencer? Oh, no. That boy needs to be prodded, pushed, and kicked if necessary. <laughs> hey, Mona, I know you're upset with me, but I really need my best friend right now. I have been a little hard on you. I just don't know how to handle this. You? I may be a father. Me, a dad. I mean, what do I do? Marry Olivia? Get a second job to support little Omar? Omar? Apollonia if it's a girl. I just want to do the right thing. Spencer, I know that this is overwhelming, but we'll get through this together, and I beg you to reconsider Apollonia. Can we keep this on the deal? I don't want word getting out. Oh, please, who would I tell? Well, if it isn't Big Papa... <laughs> Nice work, Mona. You dragged it out of me. I said, how's Spencer? But it was your tone. I can't believe you're out there waving that thing around without the safety on. It's so 1981. <laughs> See? Now, I know how uptight you heteros are, so the next time you have a date, stop by my desk on the way out. I have plain ones, studded ones, glow-in-the-dark ones. Ooh, <laughs> peppermint patty. <laughs> Big ones, flavored ones. Oh, patriotic ones. This one's a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> Drinks for everybody! <laughs> and this table. I finally heard from Olivia. She told me she's not pregnant. <laughs> she stole my thunder. I knew I shouldn't have stopped at the church to thank the Lord. <laughs> Just because there's no little Omar doesn't mean you're home free. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm going clubbing tonight. <laughs> Ooh, you're not going anywhere until you get tested, which you've obviously never done. Come on, Mona. I was with Olivia. And every person she slept with. And every person that slept with them. I mean, Spencer, wake up. Over a million people in this country have HIV, and half of them don't even know they have it or just aren't doing anything about it. This public service announcement has been brought to you by Mona Thorne. <laughs> I get it, I get it. I don't think so, Mr. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Don't you read? The epidemic is growing. And yeah, people may think they can take some kind of pill or cocktail and be okay, but there's no cure. I don't want to lose my best friend. And I've seen the girls you date. They ain't worth dying for. <laughs> okay, okay. No more unsafe sex. But I don't need a test to tell me I'm fine. I don't do clinics. This <laughs> is ridiculous. Get sexy hair now. Why glamour is in. How to dress 10 pounds slimmer. Oh. 
know. I'm glad you came down here. Now, believe me, everybody's done this at one time or another, and it's no big deal. I know. And I feel good about my decision. Proud, even. Ezekiel? Ezekiel Jackson Jones? Just call me Zeke. Shabba. <laughs> do this where'd you buy it really mona this is it see whitewash mosaic tiles antique pool so what do you think it's perfect for your apartment <laughs> you want me to have it i mean i don't even know where i would put it although right next to the bed where we pick up the color of the drapes no i could <laughs> yes you could i know but my mother said it's polite to protest <laughs> thanks mona and thanks for giving me such a nice gift. Well, basically, you stole it from me. I meant what you said about condoms. It really got me thinking. So, I went out and stocked up. Just don't tell my mother. Good for you. Hey, you got the patriotic ones. I hear that's a real crowd pleaser. Yeah, but knowing the way our mother snooped through our stuff, you better hide them in one of your old boots like I do. I don't have any old boots. Then put them in a new boot. Just put them in a boot. she gave you. 
Very funny. Your caustic wit is innovating. October 8th and 9th, respectively. <laughs> what a sale, Zora. I can't believe all the great clothes we found for your performance. Yeah, but we almost lost that jacket to the chick with the Macy Gray hair. Oh, nice work with the hip check. <laughs> hey, if you got them, use them. Right? <laughs> you know, I have fun today. Me too. Mona, I appreciate all the time you're giving me. I know you're doing everything you can to get the label to sign me. You are doing everything you can, aren't you? <laughs> well, there are a couple people in marketing I could sleep with, but if it backfired, I'd really have low self-esteem. <laughs> been there. <laughs> you know, it's been a while since I really clicked with someone. We're a lot alike. So, your life is also where relationships go to die. <laughs> Pretty much. My most recent victim was this guy, Marcus. He's been in and out of my life like six times, and every time he comes back, I take him in. I am so weak. <laughs> yeah, well, we all have that person. And for me, it's Tony. Well, from now on, men are off my to-do list. <laughs> I wish I could write off my ex. Well, tell you what, we'll just have to keep each other strong. Hi, baby, I was between clients and... Oh, I didn't know you had company. Mom, this is Zora, America's next big recording star. Zora, this is my mom. Hi. Hey, I see Ramona gets her smile. And her hips. <laughs> and her smart mouth. <laughs> well, anyway, I gotta be going. So, nice meeting you, Mrs. Thorne. You too. See you tomorrow, Mona. Bye. Another girlfriend? When am I gonna walk in here and catch you with a man? <laughs> when are you gonna stop walking in here? <laughs> when I catch you with a man. <laughs> that was fantastic. You're beautiful and you can cook. Well, I have many hidden talents. Oh, yeah? How about I show you one of mine? Ooh! <laughs> and I didn't even have to ask, hint, or beg. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm begging. Don't stop. <laughs> song here for the department heads. That way, when we do the big showcase to get you signed, there'll already be a buzz. I think it should be classy. You know, soft lighting, leather and lace, maybe a big snake. <laughs> uh, we're trying to sell Zora, not phone sex. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought we were in the music business. <laughs> well, it's a great idea. Reptile aside. But I'm not sure I'm worth all the trouble. Yes, you are. You are one of the most talented people I know. And truly beautiful. I want the world to see what I see. And you're not just saying that because you're paid to. Until we get you signed, I'm not paid to do a damn thing. <laughs> you're special. And she means the good kind of special. Like special K, not like special shoes. <laughs> no, your hands remind me of Tony's. Big and strong. Yeah, I get that a lot. <laughs> I guess. If you all think I'm worth it, then maybe I am. Let's do it. I put myself in your hands. It's a good place to be. Okay, we've got lots to do. Spence, you talk to the art department. I'll talk to marketing. This is going to be great. Adam, can you hook Zora up with some herbal tea? So, Adam, how do you think Mona would feel about being fixed up on someone? Well, I don't usually get involved in my co-worker's business. <laughs> But who you got for her? Actually, I was thinking about maybe me. Well, why would you want to ask Mona? Oh, my God, your family. <laughs> so do you really want to ask Mona out? Unless there's a reason I shouldn't. I can't think of one. <laughs> you know, it's moments like this that make being tied to a headset for $9 an hour with no health benefits almost palatable. So you think I have a chance? Again, I don't like to get involved, but I do like to watch. So I say find your moment. Go get your gal. <laughs> Clay, this is heavenly. Oh, I think I just heard angels sing. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it. You are so perfect. I never get tired of hearing that. <laughs> I mean, your feet, they're unbelievable. Like a mannequin's. <laughs> and they thank you for all the foot rubs you've given them on every date you really have magic fingers now why don't you uh join me up here and i'll show you a little magic of my own oh, i think i'm already under your spell <laughs> nice as that feels i don't want you to get carpal tunnel <laughs> you know, other part 
thoughts of me would enjoy a visit from your hands, too. How about I give you the tour? Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Reflexology on your feet to take care of everything. <clears throat> you know what? My neck's better. How about a little kiss? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. asking when our CD is coming out. Okay. <sighs> All right, I think we're just about set. Except I'm getting a strange vibe from Zora. I think she's hot for me. Can't blame the girl. <laughs> Not every woman wants you. Hey, I'm no sexual tension when I feel it. It's just like regular tension, only lower. <laughs> Thank you all for making time for this. I would like to introduce you to someone who I hope will be a tremendous addition to our roster. Give it up for Zora. Thank you. I just wrote this song, and I'd like to dedicate it to the new muse in my life. somebody gay. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> Hold up. So that means Tony, her ex, is a woman. Zora said my hands were like Tony's. So that means I have woman hands? <laughs> I can't believe none of us knew about Zora. Yeah, can you believe that? Not one of us knew. <laughs> the important thing is her song killed. The department heads were digging her. Which is why I don't want to jeopardize what we've worked so hard for. She's got a big showcase tomorrow. But how can I not say anything and let her believe I could be her girlfriend? This is crazy. I was trying to be a mentor, not a muse. <laughs> what should I do? Tell her the truth. Let her down gently. Buy me a Mini Cooper. <laughs> what? I thought you were taking requests. So, what kind of quirk does Clay have? I can't get him to touch anything but my feet. You got him to touch your feet? <laughs> yes, but he won't move up, even to my knee, and all the good stuff is up. <laughs> but I am determined to get him interested. 
interested in the rest of me. You know, Dee Dee, it's kind of hard to relate to this. I mean, no one's ever given my fate a second look. <laughs> Okay, baby, I'm off to Bargain Barn. Is there anything you need 72 cans of? Could you get me a vat of A1? I'm thinking of having 800 of my closest friends over for a barbecue. Fine, make fun. But when you need an extra gallon of Mrs. Dash, don't come running to me. Sora? What are you doing here? Well, you haven't really been available to talk since I sang at Delicious, so I decided to surprise you. Hope that's okay. Sure, it's okay. Why would it be okay? <laughs> well, I better be going. I don't want to spoil your girl fun. Don't go. I love it when you spoil my fun. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure you two want a little one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> your mom's pretty hip. She sensed I wanted to be alone with you. About that, Mona, after Tony and I split up, I felt totally lost. But you found me. I did? You showed me I could feel again. Real feelings. Deep feelings. So, as I was trying to tell you, you and I should talk about that. You seem tense. Could be, just a little. <laughs> I'd be happy to give you a back rub. Oh, 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 I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> well, then you give me one. Hmm. Let me get this off so you can really get at me. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Uh, that I hadn't started yet. Nothing worse than massages interruptus. <laughs> Marcus? Yeah, Mona, I've been thinking, and who's your unbuttoned friend? <laughs> what are you doing here? I thought you were off branding a gelding, whatever that is. Well, I've been thinking about you a lot, and hoping maybe we could give it another shot. And you thought I'd just be here like always, and just take you back like always? You always do. <laughs> yeah? Well, this is really bad timing. Yeah, really bad. <laughs> Marcus, Zora, Zora, Marcus. Oh. I'm starting to get why we always had trouble hooking up. Well, now you know. I guess you just can't assume I'll always be there for you. <laughs> yeah, Mona deserves better. It's different. I don't know if it's better. <laughs> but I guess there's nothing else to talk about. I can't think of anything. Neither. <laughs> then this really is goodbye? <laughs> Could I at least watch? Oh. <laughs> Come in, it's open. Hello, gorgeous. I come bearing gifts. Ah, the secret password. You may stay. And you look beautiful as... Oh, my God. <laughs> what are those? Just something I treated myself to. Uh, you mean mistreated. What's up with that? I just wanted you to stop looking down and notice my other assets. Look, I've noticed, and the rest of you is great, but your feet, your feet... Deserve a spotlight. That's why I got you this. A matching ring and bracelet? Yep. For your big toe and your ankle. That's it. I have worked too hard on my body and my mind to make them have to compete with my feet. So you don't enjoy all the rubbing and stroking and caressing? Okay, that was nice. Okay. But still, you've got to make a choice. It's either move on up or move on out. Well, I'm good at that way. Goodbye. Are you serious? You're actually leaving? Yes. <laughs> but would you at least take those boots off? There's no reason for the little ones to suffer. She seemed really upbeat. I guess you didn't tell her you straight. No, and I do feel a little guilty about that. Especially when I let her treat me to the movies and buy me popcorn. She paid for everything. That never happens. You know, that's pathetic. Anyway, all the big wigs are here, along with most of the smaller wigs. And that random guy from PR with a clip on dreads. If Zora nails this showcase, it's only a matter of time before I put a gold record where my train ox poster is. Should I talk to you? Look, I 
I know you're nervous, but everything's gonna go great. Mona, you gave me a new look, a new attitude, and most of all, you gave me confidence, and I want to thank you. You are welcome. But when I told Tony about the two of us, she became insanely jealous, and she wants me back. So, really? Yes. And I didn't want to lead you on, but I just couldn't go out there and perform my best with this weighing on me. The truth is, Tony's my soulmate. So, you're breaking up with me. <laughs> Look, Mona, I hope this won't affect our work relationship. And I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I was thinking maybe you should go back to men. <laughs> wow. I've lost a man and a woman in the last 24 hours. <laughs> That's a personal best. That's what I get for putting all my morals aside and conniving and manipulating just so I could make this deal happen. I mean, my God, what kind of person does that make me? A successful record exit? <laughs> hey, you're right. Single, lonely, and rejected, but successful. <laughs> showcase go well she was a big hit and the label signed her oh yay then you must be feeling great huh hmm. for the answer to that i direct your attention to the three empty ice cream cartons <laughs> i don't get it you should be thrilled thrilled that the universe came up with a new way to humiliate me i was dumped by someone i wasn't even dating <laughs> well i was dumped by someone who was dating my feet <laughs> And I was dumped by a short, skinny man who I had to lift up to kiss. <laughs> you were not. It was too. When was this? 26 years ago, it was your father. <laughs> Hey, 
yours. No, because I don't wear these. I mean, I wear these, just my these. <laughs> I was looking for a sock, and I found these giant panties. <laughs> Morning, you can make anything sexy. <laughs> Lorenzo. I know, I know, you have a boyfriend, but I can't help it. You know how I feel about you. Well, I do know, which is why I don't want you touching my underwear. Oh, well, this isn't me flirting. This is me getting you out the way. I got laundry to do, woman. <laughs> Besides, it's Friday night. Get your laundry and your giant panties out of here and go out. <laughs> Would I be here if I had anywhere to go? Chase is in Napa for the weekend again. I hate to hear that. Okay, not really. <laughs> what happened to this? Oh, that's God's way of telling me not to drink chocolate syrup right out of the bottle. <laughs> oh, I can get this stain out. This pastry chef's been covered in chocolate ice cream, chocolate sauce, chocolate pudding. That has nothing to do with work. <laughs> hey, I uh, have an amazing laundry secret. But if I tell you, you won't need me anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Hi. Jeez! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> no, no, I'm just... Nothing special, just doing laundry. <laughs> No, I'm laughing because the giant panties are still here. <laughs> yes, my mother denies that they're hers. I can't believe you got that stain out after your chocolate catastrophe. If God didn't want me to drink out of the bottle, why did he give it a spout? <laughs> Besides, Lorenzo is right upstairs, and he's a whiz with chocolate stains. He got this out for me. You gave your ex-boyfriend a shirt to clean? <laughs> Maybe. Let's say I did. Let me tell you a little something about me, Mona. All we want to do is get our foot in the door. And you gave me a shirt? <laughs> Dude is in the house. You think just because Lorenzo took a stain out of his shirt, we're going to hook up? He borrowed baking soda and you hooked up. Lorenzo knows where he and I stand. We're just friends. Mona, you're in a new relationship with Chase. Think of it as a little puppy. If you nurture it, it'll grow up to be beautiful and strong. But you bring your ex-boyfriend to hang out with your new puppy, he's gonna kick it, stomp on it, and crush it. Don't crush your puppy, Mona. You're right. Thanks. You got a dog? Oh, thanks for setting up this meeting with your mother. Well, I'm hoping we catch her at the perfect time between her post-Bloody Mary buzz and her pre-martini shakes. If she agrees to finance my stand-up dream, it'll change my life. I'll make the world laugh, and then they'll love me as much as I do. Lulu? La diva! Frangelico? Flattery and a cocktail. What do you want? We'll throw them out of the building. Sorry. Important conference call. If all this hands free now, I can't tell you how happy that has made me. I don't even want to know what that means. Um, Mom, the reason I called you over here is because Adam is putting together a stand-up showcase and he needs some financial backing. I saw him do a set and he's hilarious. Stand-up is the key to getting my own sitcom and becoming the wealthy star I was born to be. <laughs> well, imagine it. Coming up next, Adam Benet starring in How I Met Your Brother. <laughs> Queen of Queens. Yes, queer? That sounds amazing. It does, doesn't it? Let me get this straight. Uh, no pun intended. You want me to financially back your showcase so you can become a star? I'll ask the question that everyone in Hollywood asks. What's in it for me? Oh, well, you're an actor. And every great actor produces now. Mel Gibson, Halle Berry, George Clooney, and Didi LaFontaine. Sounds perfect. More than perfect. I can see it now. Didi LaFontaine presents. Count me in. Me too. It's settled then. Bye. So, what were we talking about? I missed you. Oh, I missed hugging you. I miss the stuff we do. Oh, I miss hugging you after the stuff we do. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh, I better get that. Could be Ma with a casserole. Uh, keep the casserole, lose the Ma. <laughs> hey, Mona. Hey. I brought you a stain stick in case you have any more accidents. Oh. And I brought you some Swiss chocolate so you can use my gift. Thank you. What's up, man? Oh, hey, you're back early from your trip. I didn't know you were keeping track of my schedule. Well, Mona told me when we were doing laundry. Oh, 
I didn't know we were doing laundry. We weren't. I mean, it wasn't together. He just helped me out with the stain. Yeah, well, you two take care. I better stop going out of town so much. Maybe you two won't have as much alone time. Oh, you're making too much out of this. Yes, maybe, but you have a habit of leaving out details when it comes to Lorenzo. I mean, one minute he's helping you out with a stain, and the next he'll be helping you out of your clothes. Whoa, I control who helps me out of my clothes, which reminds me, weren't you about to do that? <laughs> Look, baby, I'm a secure man, but I'm not comfortable with your relationship with this guy. We don't have a relationship. We say hi at the mailbox, we run into each other in the laundry room... He's just the guy who lives upstairs. Now, are you coming with me or what? Okay. Really? Of course. I mean, I'm upset, but I ain't crazy. <laughs> okay, help me out. I need to figure out just how to stand. Now, besides my ass, which is my best side? <laughs> Dude, why you ask me stuff like that? Just tell the damn jokes. <laughs> I need to talk to you. Anything for the woman that picked me up out of my dim receptionist job and made me a bright, shining comedy star. <laughs> about that, I've been reviewing your material. And as your producer, I have a few minor changes. This is simply crass. This is not our audience. <laughs> this just doesn't amuse. Lose this, this, this. <laughs> no short, no gay, no Asian. You're cutting the curious hybrid that is me. Oh, I left the part where you say, good evening, my name is Adam Monet. Build on that. <laughs> hey, Mona. Did you like the Swiss chocolate? Oh, it's sweet. But I can't accept any favors or gifts anymore. Really? Because I have a different kind of chocolate I want you to sample. It's a very light milk chocolate. Everything all right? Oh, yeah. Just dreaming. Nothing to talk about. Go back to sleep, babe. <laughs> so, after I finished licking the Swiss chocolate off of Lorenzo, he kissed me and gave my hair a little tug that sent shockwaves down my spine. <laughs> then, he opened the dryer and folded my delicates. <laughs> Wow, that's hot. Is he a good folder? But why are you dreaming about Lorenzo if things are so good with Chase? I'm not sure if this has anything to do with it, but a couple of weeks ago, Lorenzo told me that he wants me back. You're in a love triangle and you didn't tell me. The hell with you, why didn't you tell me? I don't think I knew it until just now. Maybe I had the dream because I was flattered by all the attention. You gotta flatter yourself out of a boyfriend. Good boyfriend. Good boyfriend who can make tall grandbabies. Mama, this is not good. It certainly isn't. You're emotionally cheating on Chase. I am not a cheater. I've only tasted Lorenzo's milk chocolate in my sleep. I know how to solve all your problems. Pick a brother and give the other one to me. I'll take any kind of chocolate I can get. I'd even settle for white chocolate. this a rabbi and a duck walk into a bar a rabbi and a duck what's next knock knock jokes as a matter of fact that is what's next <laughs> what am i doing saul saperstein talent agent extraordinaire is flying in from la just to see my show how am i supposed to come up with half an hour of new material by tomorrow night dude why put yourself through this just cancel i can't i'll never get that agent to come again I've got to find a way to make this work, but it's like I have this big dark cloud following me around. Hello, hello. <laughs> How's LaFontaine's first starlet doing? I need to talk to you. I have a few concerns about the material. Adam, we never discussed the work in front of our public. We can't let the little people see how we create magic. Let's do it in my office. Get out of my office, people. <laughs> the show isn't working. I know. I have led you down the wrong path. Oh, that's such a relief. I'll just start rehearsing my old stuff. Oh, no, my little ingenue. I have written you some new material. I think it's more appropriate for the La Fontaine audience. What weighs more, a thousand pounds of diamonds or a thousand pounds of Dom Perignon? I know. It's a thinker. You know, 
I've been feeling bad about the way I reacted to Lorenzo, and I want to apologize. You two live in the same building. You're bound to run into each other. I'm just going to have to be the bigger man and get over it. Well, believe me, if I could, I would have the whole top floor of the building removed. It would solve a world of problems. <laughs> yeah, you think you'd talk to your dad about that? <laughs> Chase, you are what's important to me. And I want this to work, so I'm just going to stay away from Lorenzo. Well, you don't really have to go that far. Okay, maybe you do. <laughs> Posted for my showcase. I don't know why I had to carry it. <laughs> Didi LaFontaine is the producer. You think Halle Berry had to carry the poster for Lackawanna Blues? <laughs> Honestly, Charles. Didi LaFontaine presents Adam Bennett. How come you have a full body picture and he's just a floating head? <laughs> I paid for the theater, advertising, and the snacks in the green room. I should be prominent on the poster. Honestly, Didi. <laughs> you paid for all of this? That means I paid for all of this. I don't remember agreeing to financially backing this endeavor. What's in it for me? Years from now, when LaFontaine Productions has been awarded its first honor, and I thank the little people, you'll be the first little person. Poking that tiger, woman. All your jewelry's in my name. Mom, this is Adam's chance to do something with his life, and you've completely made it about you. But it is about me. Look at the poster. Crushing a man's dream and you need to fix it. I mean, this is worse than the time you insisted on being merry in my third grade Christmas pageant. Such a killjoy. But for the record, no one ever looked more virginal riding a donkey than I did. Hey, Miss Vince. You know, I'm real happy things worked out with Chase. It takes a big man to understand your friendship with Lorenzo is strictly platonic. No. I never thought I'd be dating someone so evolved. I also can't believe your use of the word platonic. Hey, I'm an evolved brother, too. But is Chase evolved enough for this? For this? Mona! Oh my God, I'm talking in your sleep. Yeah, you interrupted the movie. I had another fantasy about Spencer, of all people. What do you mean, of all people? You could do a lot worse. Really? Because no one comes to mind. You sure are having a lot of fantasies about everyone but your boyfriend. I wonder what it means. It means my mother is right. I'm an emotional cheater. What am I going to do? I think you're making a big deal out of nothing. I mean, friends have fantasies about each other all the time. <laughs> Look at me and Dee Dee. Spencer, be careful. He's on the loose and he's hooking up with everybody. Well, stop dreaming and get up. All that lasagna got my stomach percolating. Now I'm definitely awake. Well, this is it, Adam. Opening night. I've got some last-minute notes for you. But I'm about to go on. Well, it's really just one small thing. I think you should try some other areas. Like your old ones. I know you got it in you. Don't let Diddy LaFontaine down. Uh, you know, I'm not stingy. I'm all about sharing our culture. You know, go ahead, outfit Natalie Portman like she's some Mongolian princess, you know. You know, dress up Liam Neeson like he's some samurai warrior. Let's just acknowledge where the stuff comes from, okay? <laughs> Rumor has it that Steven Spielberg came up with the idea for E.T. after eavesdropping on Filipino people at the airport. Mom, I want to go home. That was my grandma. You know, lucky for me, I had a big support system growing up. You know, we had a gay and lesbian teen support group right in our high school. You know, only back then we called it Drama Club. You did the right thing, Mom. As a producer... I knew if I took it away from him and gave it back, he would perform it like it was new. Right. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you. Goodbye. See, it's not all about me. Now get out of my way so I can take my bow. Thanks. Oh, my boyfriend's 
should be here in a few minutes. Hey, Mona. How's it going? I'm just waiting for Chase, who should be here in a few minutes, which means you shouldn't be here because I'm not with you. I'm with him, and I'm not a cheater, and I'm wide awake, and you've got your to-go order, and you don't want that to get cold, so go, go, go. <laughs> you know, we had our second date at this table, remember? No, we didn't. It was over there. We started over here, but I dumped tomato soup on the table, and they had to move us. Oh, yeah, you've got someone over next to us. I mean, I'll never forget the look on her face. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah! Oh, Chase, hi. Well, uh, see you guys. I know how this looks. Really? How does it look? Well, it looks like Lorenzo and I were sitting there having a good time, but he was here for takeout. I was waiting for you. We just happened to be here at the same time. Talk about a winky dink. <laughs> how was your day? Let's just order. a quiet car ride home. Sorry, I got a lot on my mind. Good night, Mom. Aren't you coming in? I don't think so. But you gotta go out of town this weekend. Let me remind you of all the good things you're gonna be missing. Baby, I'm starting to feel like every time I turn around, your ex-boyfriend is right in the middle of our relationship. Well, believe me, he's not in the bedroom. It'll just be you and me. <laughs> That's not funny. Look, like I said... It was just a coincidence. It's bad timing. Well, maybe it's you and I that have the bad timing. There's something between you and Lorenzo, and even if you don't see it, I do. I'm tired of stumbling across it. Chase. And lately, when we've been together, it's it seems like you're distracted. I mean, Mona, you're not on mine, and I don't like it. Well, I don't like you accusing me of things that aren't true. You're the person I want to be with, and if you don't believe that, maybe we should take a step back. Maybe we should. Why do I always do this? Why do I destroy every good relationship? Why do I always self-destruct? I feel like I wanna smack somebody. Turn around and bitch slap somebody. But I ain't going out, bro. of my own. I just need to borrow your Dolce Gabbana scarf. Yeah. Oh, there's a guy across the way and he's staring right into your window. You mean like a peeping Tom? Oh my God, you're right. I would keep those drapes shut if I were you. You don't have to tell me twice.
around to release the aromas. Now take a sip and let it dance on your tongue. And I was just going to throw my head back and guzzle. <laughs> Forty years in the making. Now, would you care to sample something a little younger? Hey, Mona, I... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had company. Opposite sex company. Roland, meet my sister, Dee Dee, law student slash professional date crasher. Pleasure to meet you, Dee Dee. Oh, the pleasure's all mine. And nice suit. I didn't realize Versace's new line was even available yet. Well, my advertising firm handles some of that West Coast business. And every now and then, I let Donatella kick my butt in racquetball. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have some studying to do. It was nice to meet you, Roland. This way, when Mona and I talk about you later, I can put a face with the name. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about me now? I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> Don't let this one get away. Drug him if you have to. <laughs> He's amazing. And he loves sleeping at my place. He's got clothes in the closet, a toothbrush in the bathroom. There's evidence of a man here. Ooh, it sounds like this could be long term. I know, which is why I can't help thinking there's a big old flaw poking around in there somewhere. Mona, you've got to stop being so defeatist. Whenever Joy skips around the corner, you're right there with a brick. <laughs>
mind if I call you Roland? Yeah, when you say it like that. So, Roland, I'm doing your crossword puzzle. A little help? Twelve down, a character in the musical Cats. Never saw it, never will. Oh? Then how about 26 across? What does Cher wish she could turn back? Is she still alive? I see. Five down. When was the last time you showered with another man? Get away from me. I'm going to get some coffee. Sure. Help yourself, Roland. I've completed my puzzle. And the verdict? Not guilty. They're just trying to keep the black man down. Sorry, racial reflex. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Roland. <sighs> Brother uses clear nail polish. Don't like him. <laughs> Adam. Definitely hetero. Definitely metro. Metro. Metrosexual. A man whose appearance and grooming habits might lead the untrained eye to conclude he's gay. My people call them wasted attempts in the steam room. <laughs> so we safe to date. If you don't have a problem dating a guy who uses more hair goo than you. He shares, so I'm cool with that. And he's straight, and he's mine, and I'm real cool with that. <laughs> well, looks like Big Didi's not so big anymore. That's okay, I just call you Flat Didi. Excuse me. Hey, you dropped your appointment card for a biopsy? That's not mine, it's Full Coco. <laughs> Okay, it's for me. Unless I'm scared. Slippers? What the? out here for a couple weeks now. I could arrange to put you on my route so you don't mess up those leather slippers. Thanks, but I was hoping not to be here that long. Whatever, dude. I do believe we found the flaw. that you were right and I was wrong. Wow, it feels funny saying that. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> the point is, your man does have a flaw. Roland's living in his car. What? While I was jogging, I spotted him getting a paper outside my gym in his slippers. Then he got back in his car, shaved, ate breakfast, and ironed his shirt on the dash. <laughs> Come to think of it, he did have a pile of suits in the back seat when we went out, but he said he just picked them up from his dry cleaners. Oh, Mona. <laughs> you know, I never have been to his house. Or maybe you have. <laughs> I'm here for the music. <laughs> Word on the street is they have a steel drum version of Thai Yellow Ribbon. <laughs> so, how you holding up? Good. Not so good. Changes by the second. I guess I should be thankful they found the lump during the consultation for my breast enlargement. <laughs> my vanity may have saved my life. And you couldn't tell your family, huh? I wanted to tell Dee Dee. Got to the door and froze up. 
Charles? Oh, please, the man gets nauseous watching me floss. <laughs> I didn't want to alarm until I knew what I was dealing with. I mean, what if they find something awful? I lose my breast. What's Charles gonna do then? Love his wife. Charles may be a lot of things, but what he isn't is shallow. And don't you dare tell him I said that. <laughs> one that's shallow. I mean, I can't help thinking I'm not going to be myself anymore. Less of a woman. Oh, please, listen up. There is only one organ that defines a woman. Her brain. Everything else is just window dressing. When did you get so philosophical about all this? Five years ago, the same thing happened to me. You did? Yep. And I had to go through the whole aspiration procedure. But I was too proud or too stupid to tell anybody, so I went through it alone. It wasn't easy. I always thought one was a little lopsided. <laughs> Point is, my test came back negative. And I'm sure yours will, too. Mrs. Thorne, we're ready for you. and Roland is not homeless. Maybe he's just thinking outside the box. Hello. He's one step away from living in one. <laughs> hey, if you ever have kids, I hear you all makes a booming nursery. You're both so small. Not small. Subcompact. <laughs> oh, wait, oh, wait. I don't understand this madness either, but somebody who drives a broken-down Vespa or his grandma's cutlass with saran wrap windows should not pass judgment. <laughs> I think we can, because we don't live in them. I hate it when you're right. Get out. <laughs> hey, let's go to the car dealership down the street. I'm in the market for a one-bedroom with a rear wiper. <laughs> Just until I get back on my feet. 
Hey, come on, why are we all so hung up on living instruction? Do you know that our African ancestors lived in huts and all in my car? And that was without heated seats. I'll say it again. You live in your car. Listen, Mona, I like you. And I was trying to find a way to tell you about my situation because I didn't want you to think I was taking advantage of you. Or your indoor plumbing. I guess I can understand that. Why don't you get in so we can talk about it? sometime today <laughs> any news everything's okay thank god and thank you <laughs> well guess you're free to remodel your rack <laughs> <laughs> i've decided against it my girls might not be perfect but i have never been happier to have them on my team <laughs> <sighs> i would however be happy to refer you to my surgeon Excuse me. It's never too late to get your ducks in a row, no matter how far south they've flown. You wish you had these ducks. They go with those giant webbed feet. Well, this certainly is different. How's your wine? It's helping. Car life does have its perks. In the morning, your front yard can be the Pacific. And at night, you can fall asleep under the majestic peaks of Yosemite. <laughs> but best of all, built their planetarium. <laughs> oh. Mm. It's beautiful, huh? Yeah. Care to adjourn to the bedroom? Uh oh. Watch out. <laughs> We're right out on the street. Oh, the windows are tinted? <laughs> I'm sorry, Roland, but I just, I can't do this. But no, Mona. this is just too crazy for me. So, goodbye, Roland. Wait, wait, wait. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. <laughs> Except on Wednesdays, because it's street cleaning day, and I have to relocate to Union Square. <laughs> served you wine out of the armrest? That was kind of surreal. Roland was so in love with himself that he chose his bougie image over a basic necessity of life. Thanks, sis. Sometimes I forget what a sensitive, caring person you can be. That you take the time to listen... Shut up! Uh, Check it out! <laughs> that non-peeping, peeping Tom is out walking his dog. Looks like the dog's walking him. Now you know why he was ignoring all your little window dances. I think your peeping Tom is blind. <laughs> nuh -uh. yeah, see? I don't think the white cane is a fashion accessory. So all those little peep shows I put on were for nothing? Well, I wouldn't exactly say for nothing. Check out the sign on the fifth floor. Hey, sexy, how about a flash dance? <laughs> if you hadn't been divorced for the last 22 of them. I'm not saying I'm expecting gifts. So, what do you need for your new apartment? Oh, I'll let you know after I see the place. You haven't seen it yet? No, I have to get the key from Dad. But it's the top floor, so it's got to have a better view. I can probably see the Bay Bridge from up there. And who knows, maybe it'll even have skylights. So that guy broke into my apartment. <laughs> Well, yeah, Ma, that's what I'm hoping for. Hey, we had a deal. No, you listen to me. No, you listen to me.
listen to me. No, you listen to me. Okay, I'm listening. Hey, baby. Hey, Dad. Hey, dollface. Hey, bad sex. Happy anniversary. I prefer to think of it as Independence Day. So, Dad, do you have the key to the apartment upstairs? I'd like to start moving my stuff up. Did I say you could have it? Well, you said if mean Lady Flanagan ever died. But what is the problem, Charles? It is your building. Now, does your wife control this, too? Listen, call me back in two minutes. My uh, secretary's uh, passing a stone. Mona, I, I'm sorry. I kind of promised it to your sister. What? Dee Dee? You mean half-sister? I thought she was away at college. Just graduated, top of her class, and she's going to be starting law school at Bolt, which is why she's going to be living here in my building. Well, why does Dee Dee have to live in this building? Can't she live in one of your other ones? Or maybe a nice, cozy dumpster? <laughs> oh, come on. Look, it'll be good. The two of you finally getting to know each other, sharing the things that sisters share. And Dee Dee's a great kid. You really never gave her a chance. Well, maybe it wasn't all that convenient, what with Mona growing up in the city riding the bus, while Princess Dee Dee spent her summers in the country riding her pony. <laughs> is that what this is about? Mona, you want a pony? I'll get you a pony. Daddy? For me to be friends with Dee Dee, the pony would have to be a Mustang. <laughs> Convertible. Okay, how about you take the apartment upstairs and Dee Dee can move into this one? Well, I like the part where I get the apartment upstairs. Hey there, you, you, you. Dee Dee? Oh, how amazing is this? I'm so happy. When aren't you? Oh. It has been too long since we've seen each other. I mean, look, you have breasts. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, I remember the last time we got together. You got your bubble yum stuck in my hair, and they had to shave my head. <laughs> Just that one side. And, and it grew back so nicely. I swear, we are going to have so much fun. Hey, I'm swearing too. <laughs> Hello, cute stuff. Mwah. Feel this. Big Dee Dee. Look at you. You never change. Thank you. I guess it's true what they say. Sometimes our oldest clothes become our best friends. <laughs> Charles, honey, what do you say we take a look at Dee Dee's new apartment? Actually, there's been a little change of plans. I'm moving upstairs and Dee Dee's moving in here. Oh, really? Now, why do you want the one upstairs? Is it nicer? Because if it is, you know, Dee Dee had a little heart set on that one. <laughs> Mom, I don't care. This place is great. Hush, baby, this doesn't concern you. Look, I'm sure there's a solution. You're damn straight. My daughter's getting that apartment. I'm sorry. I seem to have missed a step. Why is your daughter getting it? She's older. Oh, honey, if that was the case, you'd have everything. <laughs> Look, I don't know what it's like on that hot tin roof you slid off of. <laughs> but where I come from, a promise is a promise. And Charles promised that apartment to Mona. Is that so? <laughs> Charles, sweetheart, did you promise Mona that? <laughs> All right. How about this? Whoever guesses which hand I have the key in gets the apartment. How's that sound? Sounds like an equitable solution to me. Lawyer speak. I'm getting ready. <laughs> Mona, very few things sound equitable to me, so whatever. Mona, go ahead and pick. I think Dee Dee should pick. We'll flip to see who picks. All righty, I'll flip. Why should you flip? For the love of God, it doesn't matter. Dee Dee, pick a hand. Well, it's the pony all over again. Sophomore year. And you did get some action there. 
Remember it was so tiny, the only place to sit was on your company? Oh my God, Spencer, I'm living in a friggin' treehouse. Don't exaggerate. A treehouse is way bigger than this. So have you seen your sister since she moved in? Half-sister. And no, she came up here a couple of times. I told her I had a guy up here. She doesn't know me. Very mature. Okay, Mona, what's the real deal? Why don't you like that girl? Because ever since the little princess was born, I've been treated like a raggedy one-eyed doll you shove in the back of a dusty old drawer or a stinky old attic. Oh, look, I'm home. Mona, help! What do you think of this lamp here? Help, Mona, help! You realize you're going to have to go down there. Why? Because she's screaming help. Well, maybe if we wait long enough, she won't need it. Mona, spiders! All that screaming was about spiders. Yes, they're everywhere. Oh, you'll get used to it. Just think of them as little puppies. If puppies had eight legs and left red itchy bite marks. And you know what? They can climb. Ah! Damn, my old place looks good when you slap on a coat of rich girl. Hi, we haven't met. I'm Spencer. And you're surprisingly light. Dee Dee, they're spiders. Call them exterminators. See ya. Mona, Mona, wait. I've never done anything like that before. Why am I not surprised? So will you please call for me? Fine, but I want the record to reflect that this is really lame on your part. I happen to have arachnophobia. It's a medical condition. <laughs> exterminators. Exterminators? Oh, really? Cute exterminators. If I can ever be of service or if you have any music needs, just let me know. I work with Mullen A in our department at Delicious Records. In fact, I just signed a group. <laughs> yeah, I'm balling. <laughs> Sorry, but did you need something with onions? Looking for an outfit to seduce the exterminator. I gotta tell you, I smell more than a whiff of desperation. Hey, it's better than the stench of eight months without a date, all right? Besides, we made this amazing connection on the phone. I mean, it was like talking to you, but hot. to be hot. Believe me, I can be hot. <laughs> Hello, Mona. Don't do that. Do what? Do that! Besides, I'm not trying to seduce him. Then definitely wear that. So what's your plan with this guy? Simple. I'm going to dust off my doomy pumps and go meet the bug man. What do you think? You're gonna be home early tonight. <laughs> wow, you look nice. Oh, really? I just threw on whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> Dee, I have an idea. Why don't I wait for the exterminator and you go get a frappuccino? I don't want you to have to witness the carnage. You know, spiders scream when they die. <laughs> This is my dream. Huh? Growing up, I've always had this dream that someday we'd, like, live together and help each other and be like real sisters. Wow. As a kid, my dream was that a big dinosaur bird would swoop down out of the sky and carry you and your mother off in its beak and dump you in the sea. And then me and my mother would move back in with my father and be happy forever. But, you know, different people, different dreams. I think I will go get that frappuccino. Wow. <laughs> wow? Wow, bugs. Don't see that every day. Of course, unless you're a, a exterminator, which I am, so I do. <laughs> but still, uh... Wow. Come on in. This 
This is my sister, Mona. Hello. How are you doing? I'm fun. So, uh, about those spiders? Found one. comes rolling down the aisle, pushing that little cart. She gives him a wink and an extra bag of peanuts. He goes off to the bathroom, and well, let's just say the friendly skies have never been so damn friendly. Anyway, this thing is totally different. All Dee Dee did was open a door. That's all it takes when you're Dee Dee. Then don't let her open the doors. You open the doors. Mom, you're missing my point. I've spent my whole life coming in second to her. But, unfortunately, the world is made up of Dee Dee's and Mona's. And I ended up a Mona. Sweetheart, that is ridiculous. You know, you always make everything black or white. Not everyone is a Dee Dee and Mona. Look at me. I'm a Phyllis. <laughs> Just an older Mona, Ma. How'd you get to be so negative? <laughs> <laughs> So Dee Dee's going out with a beautiful exterminator tonight? That's right. And you're just going to take this lying down? I've taken worse lying down. Well, I'm not thrilled that Dee Dee is out on a date with my soulmate. But what am I going to do? He likes her. So that's it. I'm moving on. Come on, Spence. Let's drink. Was that our door? They're back. I know, I know. Try this. Was that the sound of a door closing or a headboard banging against a wall? Oh, she really sleeping him on the first date? Oh, my God. I love her. Wait, wait, wait. It's quiet. Mercy 
whatever this is. In fact, you can tell her that she doesn't need to pimp for me because I can get my own dates, thank you very much. <laughs> Clearly, we're talking about two different things. Uh, I'm talking spiders. What are you talking about? Something different that you're obviously not talking about. You know, uh, I think we've been set up. I think I'm going to kill Dee Dee and become the only child I was meant to be. Hey, hey, you're into uh, funky green dogs? Yeah, and Jamiroquai and Nappy Roots and Train Ox. We talked about this on the phone when I called you to do Dee Dee's apartment. But that was you. That, that was an amazing call. It was, wasn't it? Listen, uh, since it's obvious we should have gone out in the first place, you you want to go get a cup of coffee or something? Or something. <laughs> or something. <laughs> Coming home from your date at 12.30 a.m.? Not as good as one, but better than 12. Good night, Dee Dee. Come on, Mona. Spencer said you haven't had a date in months. You know you want to tell somebody about it. Big mouth, Spencer. <laughs> but I am bursting. I guess you'll do. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, it was midnight, and he was walking me home. Kiss? Yes, girl. Good kiss. Let's just say next time he may get a little more than the lips. Ah, there's gonna be a second date. Ah! Okay, the shrieking thing we're gonna have to work on. Mona, look at us. Is this great or what? Okay, Dee Dee. Yesterday you were pretty upset with me. So why'd you hook me up with Brian? What do you mean? Well, I certainly wasn't very nice to you. So you didn't have to do something nice for me. I did it because you're my sister. What's the catch? Mona, all I've ever wanted was for us to have some kind of relationship. I mean, look at us. We're grown women, and we don't even know each other. I'm cool with that. <laughs> well, I'm not. Do you think that I just happened to move in here? I could have moved into any one of Daddy's buildings. What? You mean you had a choice? Yes, and I chose to be with my sister. That's sick and twisted and maybe even a little smart. Maybe I should rethink my opinion of you. Maybe you should. <laughs> nah, you will. Besides, you're going to need me around for, I don't know, legal advice, moral support, help with those clothes. <laughs> hey. What's wrong with my clothes? Want some ice cream? Okay. But don't read too much into this. And I'm gonna need my own spoon. <laughs> oh! Oh my god! They're back! Alright, nothing on this planet creeps me out more than spiders. How do you deal with them? I don't have any spiders upstairs. I know you think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but will you please switch apartments with me? For you, Twisted Sister? Sure. What is that? Oh, hey, sorry about the noise. What's going on? Oh, you know my mother. She thought the place needed a little work, so she's knocking down some walls, putting in a new kitchen. One of those whirlpool tubs. <laughs> of course she is. Be careful with those skylights. We've got a whole lot of sunshine to let in. <laughs>